Probiotics are big right now. We take them for a multitude of reasons, and recent research has shown that adding the right kinds of bacteria to reef aquariums can have a beneficial impact on things like our acropora. So what if we could add a probiotic to our fish food? What one would we add? How much of it? And would it make a difference at all? Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this video is all about a recently published paper that looks exactly at those questions in the Ocellaris clownfish. A toxinous bacterium, Lactobacillus plantarum, as probiotic supplementation for productive performance and sanitary improvements on the clownfish Amphiprion ocellaris was published in Aquaculture this past April in 2020. There's a link down below in the description, so check it out. You get all the details directly from the source. Amongst all the fish that we keep in our saltwater aquariums, clownfish remain one of the most popular. They're very easy to keep healthy, they've got interesting personalities, and they're widely available as captive bred specimens. It's easy to meet the nutritional requirements of clownfish, but what if we could do better by simply adding a certain strain of bacteria to their diet? Could this also improve the health of our other fish? Well, by looking at the species of bacteria that are naturally found in the digestive tracts of fish, we can find species of bacteria that might be able to have a beneficial impact on the fish itself. When we add those bacteria to the fish food, we might be able to see better growth, better conversion of food into actual tissue, uh, better overall health, and even specific changes to the fish's white blood cell count. It's important to note that not just any bacteria has these effects. These effects are found when adding what's called an atoxinous bacteria, a bacteria which is naturally found in those fish. So there's gonna be a little bit of homework before you just go adding any random probiotic. Previous to this study, there was actually not one done specifically in clownfish, so I thought this was a pretty cool paper to present to you all. The research team is from Brazil, and they isolated Lactobacillus plantarium from six Ocellaris clownfish, and then they used this in their experiments. They ran four versions of their experiment, a control with no probiotic, and then three different doses of Lactobacillus plantarium, all just sprinkled over some tetramarine pellet food, and then they fed it three times a day at a rate of 4% of their body weight each feeding. Lactobacillus plantarum is a very common bacteria that is naturally found in a variety of things that you'll eat every day. Things like milk, pickles, sourdough, stuff like that, kimchi. It's available in a pill or tablet form as well, and it's often marketed as being beneficial for women's health. But it has a lot of positive impact on us in a lot of different ways, and so it might be something to consider for men as well. Um, you know, but that's not the topic for this video, so let's get back to clownfish. The research team fed their clownfish for either 60 or 90 days, in fact the whole thing was 90 days, and then they looked at the blood and intestinal tissues from some of the trial fish. As an aside, I can't imagine how hard it would be to hit a vein in a clownfish to be able to draw blood. As a final test, the team also injected some Vibro fluvialis into some of the fish, to test how well they'd be able to fight off a bacteria that's known to cause disease in clownfish. After just 30 days, the fish in the highest concentration test were already showing faster growth and weighed more than fish in the other trials. The highest concentration dosage was 1 times 10 to the 8th cells per milliliter, while the lowest was 1 times 10 to the 4th cells per milliliter. After 60 days, every fish that was getting probiotics was doing better than the control group. Again, the fish in the highest dosage group were growing the fastest. There was no difference between the groups in the overall survival rate, and at the end of the trial, that's 90 days, the highest and second highest dosage groups were showing about the same overall growth. So perhaps there's some upper lim limit to the benefit that probiotics can actually provide. When they looked inside the fish at their intestines, the fish in the highest and the second highest group had a marked increase in their intestinal villi. These are little finger-like structures that line our small intestines and also the fish's intestines, and they help absorb nutrients, things like that, from our food. So it would seem that feeding Lactobacillus or Lactobacillus plantarum to clownfish not only makes them grow better, but it also makes them better able to absorb the nutrients from the food that they're eating. The highest dosage rate also increased the white blood cell count in the fish's blood. The second highest dosage also showed an increase, but it wasn't as broad of an increase when you looked at the individual types of white blood cells, as was in the highest group. After injecting some of the fish with Vibro fluvalis, 
55% of the control group died after just 96 hours, while none of the fish in the highest dosage group died at all. So it would seem that there is an effect on the fish's ability to fight off infection that is gained from eating the probiotic-laden food supplement. That likely has something to do with the increase in white blood cells that they noted, as those are the cells that are in your blood which fight infection. It's important to note that this was a study in the Ocellaris clownfish, and other species of fish are going to react differently. In fact, some species of fish show no changes at all from the addition of probiotics. So while this could be useful in our tanks, it may not affect every fish we feed in the same way, and we might need to use a different probiotic for different species. It seems that matching the species of probiotic to a given species of fish by finding it naturally occurring in them could be a telling indication that that might be a good one which will have a positive impact on their health. And of course, that kind of investigation is not something that we as hobbyists can easily do, so we're going to have to rely on papers like this one in order to find a match between a probiotic species and a fish species. It seems that, at least in the case of the Ocellaris clownfish, Lactobacillus plantarum at concentrations between 1 times 10 to the 6th and 1 times 10 to the 8th CFU per milliliter, that's just cells per milliliter, are going to increase their overall growth and health. Above that limit, fish probably can't fully use the bacteria and the effect is going to be diminished for the amount of bacteria going in. Now, I would think we could probably buy this probiotic locally. It's widely available. Just break open the capsules and sprinkle it on our fish food pretty easily. So that's something to consider trying out, but keep in mind the dosages. There is a link in the paper down below in the description. I always encourage you to check it out yourself if you're interested in the content. You may be able to get it through your school's library or something like that. I hope you enjoyed the video. It does seem like there's a lot of research in the probiotic area right now, so I'm sure we're going to be back here talking about probiotics before too long. Take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You'll get more content just like this. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.